G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here, astronomer and science communicator. And by science communicator, I really mean Google concierge. No, let me Google that for you. So you don't have to. I mean, you could have easily, but you didn't. Today, I'll be sharing details of the HAGB color combination, a special method for capturing a galaxy photo that your poorly designed eyes will never be able to see. Join me as I improve on God's clearly shoddy work featuring the Sculptor Galaxy or Silver Dollar Galaxy. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. I was gonna show you a portrait of the Large Magellanic Cloud on a pair of underpants that stone men sent me uh, but my wife vetoed this decision about the direction of my social media influence probably because of the profound effect seeing my would have especially in a uh, pair of budgie smugglers and let's be honest it's uh, less of a budgie and more of a king parrot so instead today's video is sponsored by high point scientific high point scientific are a usa vendor they sell a wide range of astronomy equipment and they're there to support people like us who have spent their kids inheritance on this crazy hobby and they have a price match guarantee. So really, if you are in the USA and you are using any other vendor, you have to wonder, do you have an emotional attachment to that other vendor? Or are you basing your decision on clear empirical scientific evidence? Is your choice of astronomy vendor grounded in logic and science? And now I'm gonna show you an image that I just took of M33, the Sculptor Galaxy. This image is so cool and it took me a while to get the data together, but I'm really happy with how it turned out as a galaxy photo, which as you know, on this channel, I don't normally take photos of galaxies. This image is sure to blow your hair off. So you've probably already noticed something different about the way this image looks compared to maybe some of the galaxies you've been taking. The first thing you'll notice, especially if you compare against true color images of galaxies, you notice that you don't get those beautiful red nebula coming through the image. Normally in a true color photo, you would combine red, green and blue filters to make a true color image. But in this one, we've used the hydrogen alpha layer as the red layer. Now this means that the hydrogen alpha layer has to be taken at a longer exposure length than the others. It's going to be less sensitive because there's less signal in each exposure. So I've bumped my hydrogen up to 10 minute exposures on this one. I've used the green layer as the luminance layer. So this combination is actually G H A G B. It's getting a bit esoteric, right? Once you swap that red layer out for a hydrogen alpha layer, you'll notice that the nebula throughout the galaxy really pop out. So this trick can help you get those beautiful galaxy photos that you see in magazines. Now in an earlier video, I talked about really looking at our images uh, and I wanted to see how much I could learn about space and about this image and about Sculptor by really digging into what I'm looking at here. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to look at the green channel because that turned out the cleanest. It's got a lot of detail here. You can see the dust lanes and a few things I notice immediately. There are some small fuzzies in here. If I look around, there's a galaxy over here. See this little nebula just floating around? That's sort of away from the rest of the galactic plane here. When we talk about the way a galaxy moves, we talk about its kinematics, which is where they measure a uh, star's uh, velocity and direction. But this is a bit of an illusion. Like if I look at the galaxy, is it obvious that this is the side that's closest to us and this is the one that's angled away? Uh, it's nearly edge on. The angle that we see this galaxy is very severe. And yet it's not really a classic spiral. Here is the ESO's view of the galaxy, but if I go over here to the infrared view from Spitzer, 
uh, check out the bar in the middle and these spirals. This is a barred spiral galaxy. We can't immediately see that bar in my image. Uh, if I go back to optical here, we see the dark dust lanes up here. I still think, at least intuitively, that this is the stuff here that's closer to us and this is the stuff further back. The reason this stuff at the top of the galaxy appears more smeared and less clear than this side is because this side is closer to us. And on this side, we're looking through a lot of the gas that the galaxy holds. So the bar is running this way. So now we're looking at a motion like that. I'll just rotate this back. I think this feels more natural having the close side towards us down the bottom here. But something else I've always noticed with this galaxy, whenever I shoot it, is that there's this blurry patch here. You see how all of this just suddenly becomes blurry and there's little blurry patches through here as well. Some of it's quite well resolved, but some of it really just looks like rubbish. And the first time I imaged this galaxy, I thought there was something wrong with my camera. I thought maybe I've smudged the lens somehow. Okay, now this is Hubble's view, but check this out. We've got a big blurry patch here. Is this a fault with Hubble's camera or is this actually how the galaxy blurs out? Look at that patch there and this patch up here. All of this seems pretty well resolved. Uh, maybe not quite as well resolved as the stuff down the bottom, but there are these blurry patches. I'm just not sure about that. But one thing I can confirm is every time I image this galaxy, I get blurry patches as well. <laughs> Let's just look at someone else's image. You see that? Definitely blurry patches. It's not just me. Okay, let's move on to image annotation. Okay, I've solved the image using the Gaia DR2 catalog and now I'm going to annotate the image so we can get a little bit more detail. As suspected, there's a galaxy there. It hasn't got these smaller ones, some of these bigger galaxies here. So I wonder if there's a limiting magnitude that it's hitting. Let's see if I can get a bit more detail. Oh, this is cool. So I can see here when I use the Gaia data, I'm getting stars down to the 20th magnitude, really faint. I can definitely see 19.2, 19.8 there, some clear 20s just here. Considering that the record for amateur equipment was about 21, only about a decade or so ago, that's amazing. But you can definitely see we are getting a lot of these within the galactic plane itself. So there's a definite bunch of all the faint stars. Now that's not surprising, we can't really resolve most of the stars in the galaxy because the galaxy's light is in aggregate. This glow is actually much fainter stars that we can't see and it's just the overall glow that comes from the stars. We can't see them as pinpricks of light. In fact these very faint 19 and 20s that I'm resolving are really the bright ones. Uh, they're just on on the edge of my detection capabilities with my equipment. Uh, now I'm going to blink the blue channel for you uh, to show you something interesting. This is essentially a video of my blue channel and you can see a little asteroid. You see that there? Sipping towards the galactic plane. Peter Einar Lockjaw was kind enough to take three of these blue frames and solve it for me. So he managed to identify the asteroid as 66927-1999 VP199. This asteroid uh, is basically MAG-18 and just goes to show how far we've come with equipment these days. Considering it was only discovered two decades ago, we didn't really even have workable digital cameras to do this stuff with back then. So it's really the upgrades in camera equipment that have allowed this sort of stuff to be detected by backyard astronomers. Galaxies are a huge subject and there is so much more to explain and know about them but the point of this exercise and the point of these little deep dives into my images is to show you that when we take images we can look deeper. We can actually research the galaxy and find correlations with things in research papers and see if we can tease out some extra information and some new things that we didn't know before. Definitely try to annotate your image. Also blink looking for asteroids and other hidden transient phenomena. And when you start looking at papers, you'll find all sorts of different things that you do capture in your image, but perhaps you didn't realize. For me, it was the dust and gas distribution in NGC 253, causing these blurry patches, which I find really fascinating. We're in a sort of in-between season now between summer and winter. So I will be shooting another galaxy next, hopefully M33 Triangulum. But I hope Hope you enjoyed that video and thanks for joining me. Thanks to Per Ina for solving the asteroid for me. Uh, one little bit of news was that the little experiment I did in my last video where we wanted to PayPal bomb a developer, Torsten Edelman, who develops Fire Capture, 
Uh, that was a huge success. We really freaked him out. He actually thought his website had been hacked because so much money was rolling in. Uh, random 69 cents or $1.69 donations from all over the world. He was blown away by our efforts and that's all because of you guys. I for one am glad that the fire capture software is going to be around for a little longer uh, because of the enthusiasm bump we've possibly sent his way. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and don't forget to subscribe if you like this sort of stuff. I don't really do this for money or anything though the sponsorship dollars uh, do help me buy more equipment and I use that equipment to make more videos uh, and I just like doing it. I'm a natural oversharer. But anyway, my name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.